turn your phone off. Get one with a get one with a quieter silent feature. This actually means this actually means secant of x squared, right? You can do you can do this either one of two ways here. You can you can look and start to panic because it says secant and you don't have a secant button. You could deal with that first if you want, or you could deal with the squared first here. We'll make a difference in this one. If you want to deal with the squared first, if you have something squared, if you had m squared is 3, you would say that m is equal to yeah, plus or minus square root of 3. You do the same thing here. If secant squared is 3, secant is plus or minus square root of 3. Don't forget the plus or minus because you're going to forget half the solutions otherwise. If you if you know what the like up here if it was plus or minus 1 over root 2, it's going to be some of the solutions are above and some of the solutions are below. It doesn't matter because it could be positive or negative. That's not the graph of secant, but it's the same idea. We do not have a secant button, so we have to deal with this. What could I change this to? Yeah, no, I'm going to I'm going to recommend you don't change this to 1 over cos. I'm going to recommend that you change the the ratio, right? If if secant of something is 2, what is its cosine? 1 over 2. It's going to be easier if you flip the the ratio, all right? Not the, you know, I mean, you could do it here because if you had 1 over cos over here, you can just switch it around. But this is going to be the same as saying cosine is plus or minus 1 over root 3. Cosine is 1 over root 3. Now, now that I've taught you to use exact value triangles, you might start to think about exact value triangles for this one. Do you know a triangle with these numbers in it? That's the first thing you can think. Yes, you do, right? Here's root 3, here's 1, here's 2. The second thing, it's not only good enough to say, do you know a triangle that has a 1 and a root 3 in it? You have to be able to get it to be the cosine ratio. Can you, can you pick one of these two angles so that the cosine ratio is 1 over root 3? Not really, right? If you picked this angle, its cosine is 1 over 2. If you picked... This angle, its cosine is root 3 over 2. There's no way to get the cosine ratio to be 1 over 3. This would be very tricky if I gave you this on a test because people would want to make it exact values because of the 1 and the root 3. You can't use exact values here. Okay? Can't use exact special triangles, right? Just because of that. But what, so you have to resort to using the calculator to find the reference angle. Use the calculator. You're going to do cos inverse of what ratio am I going to put in there? Yeah, I just put this in here. 1 over root 3. Use the positive ratio. Don't use the negative. And then think about where am I looking for my solutions. This is, this is the thinking of where you have to use your solutions. It says over here cosine is this. So here's what you're thinking. You're thinking cosine is, what is it? Is it positive or negative? It's both, right? Positive or negative in all four quadrants. All four quadrants, right? It's positive or negative in all four quadrants. So how many solutions are we looking for here? Four, right? Four solutions. We're looking for four solutions here. We're going to get one in every quadrant because it's positive or negative. Let me highlight this again here. Positive or negative. If you forget the positive or negative, you're, you're, you're leaving out half the solution. Because when you square it, it doesn't matter whether the ratio was positive or negative. This is where it's going to help to be able to store the answer on your calculator. My virtual calculator fell asleep. It means I've been talking too long here. So we want cos inverse. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Cos inverse of 1 over root 3. I would actually put 1 over root 3 here. Don't round off the decimal and then use it. That's the reference angle. You can do this really quickly. You can find all four really quickly in your calculator. I would do that and then write them all down. I'm going to store that as x because then I don't have to punch that number in again and it's more accurate. 
So that's the first, that's the quadrant one angle. How do I get the quadrant two angle? Subtract from that, subtract from pi. I'm just going to go pi minus x because I stored it. That's the quadrant two angle. Quadrant three angle I can get by doing pi plus that value. And the quadrant four angle, how do I get that one? Yeah, 2 pi. 2 pi minus that value. Coincidentally, all four are visible on the screen still, and then you can just go write them all down, right? If you're looking for all four of them there. So I'm going to get this screen first and then copy them down. Okay, you can, whoops, it's really useful. Little too small, right? How's that? Is that visible? If you put the four answers down, I mean, just list them in order if you want. List them as a list, sideways, I don't know. If we're doing two decimals, round it off. And again, my lack of putting the roughly equal to sign, 2.179, 4.1, 4 what would this one be if I'm doing two decimals? 4.10, you got to put the zero there to say I did it to two decimal places, and 5.33. If you're worried about your rounding uh, skills or lack thereof, just do to more than two decimals. You can always be more accurate than you're asked for here. Those are your four answers from zero to two pi. It's four places where it's positive or negative. 